Hello, friends and neighbors. This is Pastor Stephen Wall coming to you again from St. John St. Peter Lutheran Church in Cleveland, Wisconsin. It's great to be back. I know I took a break. I guess I took a break of about eight months. Uh, last summer, I, I hit a creative wall after doing these video devotions twice per week for, for about 15, 16 months. I hit a creative wall and took a short break that kind of extended into a long break. But I'm back, and it seems like it's a good time to be back uh, because as we look around at what is going on in our world, can you imagine yesterday morning, Thursday morning, we woke up to incredible news frightening news of a ground war in Europe that Vladimir Putin had sent Russian troops into the sovereign nation of Ukraine and began assaults by land, sea, and air against the people of Ukraine. The battle continues to rage, and as we watch, it seems uh, as though the Ukrainian Forces are putting up a valiant defensive effort to protect their, their country against the, the Russian invasion. It's a lot. It's a lot to take in. And our hearts and our minds and our prayers are with the people of Ukraine. It's tragic, the kind of loss uh, of life that is going on as a result of the aggression of Vladimir Putin and his territorial ambitions trying to reestablish the, uh, the Russian Empire and its, the, the boundaries, uh, the extent of the Russian Empire. As always, we want to turn to God's word for guidance, assurance, comfort, in difficult times, our prayers, our hearts, and our minds are with the people of Ukraine. And we think especially of our brothers and sisters in Christ there in Ukraine, our sister synod, our sister church in Ukraine, the, the Lutheran Church of Ukraine. It was just a couple of years ago that uh, Vlad Horpenchuk, he's the son of the bishop of the Lutheran Church of Ukraine. Vlad Horpenchuk was a seminarian at our seminary in, in Mequon, and uh, he came up to our church and preached one Sunday, and what a blessing it was to hear him preach and, and uh, to, to just have an appreciation for our, our brothers and sisters there in the Ukraine. And our, our hearts and our prayers go out to them and to all the people of Ukraine at this time. We want to turn to God's word for comfort and assurance, and we, we find that in Psalm 46. Uh, before we, we read that, though, uh, I want to reflect on a phrase that we find in the Bible. It's, uh, it's a Hebrew phrase, two words, that uh, it's, it's uh, Adonai Tzivaot. And even that word Adonai is, is probably more accurately would be that, that special name for the Lord, uh, Yahweh, perhaps it was pronounced. So Yahweh Tzivaot, uh, that's the Hebrew phrase, and Yahweh being the name of the Lord, and Tzivaot mean, meaning uh, armies or hosts. And, and this particular phrase uh, gets translated a number of different ways in English translations. And it's difficult to pick up on the, the, the fullness of the meaning of that phrase, uh, the Lord of hosts. Well, what's a host? You know, I always thought a host refers to an army, in particular the angel hosts, the angel armies, the, the angel beings that are at God's command, that, uh, that he, he commands his angel armies concerning you and me to watch over us and protect us, and what a comforting thought that is. But there, there's more to it. There's more to it. Um, you know, the, the, the Lord of hosts, that's the way uh, the King James Version translates it. Uh, the English Standard Version translates it that way. Um, the New International Version uses the phrase Lord Almighty to translate it. And, and certainly it's a reminder of God's power, his sovereignty, his uh, dominion, uh, that he is almighty. In our, in our Evangelical Heritage Version translation, that's what I've got here, uh, it gets translated. 
Uh, Yahweh Tzivaot gets translated as, uh, as Lord of Armies. And it's not just the angel host or the angel armies, but it's a recognition that God is in control of worldly, earthly armies. That God has dominion and power and authority over the things that happen here on earth. That nothing can happen if God decides that it's not going to. That God is powerful to disrupt the worldly ambitions and plans of evil men. God is powerful and able. He is also powerful and able to use worldly and earthly armies to advance his purpose in this world. And, and, you know, it's hard for us to always understand what that purpose is, except that we know that God wants all people to know his son, that God wants all people to come to a knowledge of Jesus Christ and be saved. And, and uh, sometimes it's through hardship and difficulty and, and wars and rumors of wars that, as frightening as those things are, but, but God is able to turn those things for good. God is able to use the wicked uh, actions of wicked, evil people and turn them out, uh, turn, turn those actions into uh, good for his people and for the gospel. And so the, that phrase, Lord of hosts, Lord of armies, Lord Almighty, whenever you hear that phrase, when you're reading through Scripture, and it, and it occurs all throughout the Old Testament, uh, more than 250 times, either Lord of hosts or God of hosts, uh, something like 285 times it occurs in the Old Testament. And, and just a reminder that God is sovereign. God is in control. We cry out to him because we trust that he is able to help. We cry out to him because he is able to, uh, to rescue us from the, the plots of evil men. We cry out to him that he would provide safety as the world rages around us. We cry out to him that he provides safety to those uh, people in Ukraine who are under attack, who never know when the next missile strike is going to hit, who have gotten used to hearing now the sound of air sirens. So our prayer is for them that they would find eternal safety and security in God, our Savior, God who is the Lord of hosts. And so we look at Psalm 46. Twice in here you'll hear that phrase, Lord of armies, Adonai, or Yahweh, Sivaot. Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength, a helper who can always be found in times of trouble. That is why we will not fear when the earth dissolves and when the mountains tumble into the heart of the sea. Its waters roar and foam. The mountains quake when it rises. There is a river. Its streams bring joy to the city of God, to the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in her. She will not fall. God will help her at daybreak. Nations are in turmoil. Kingdoms fall. God raises his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of armies is with us. The God of Jacob is a fortress for us. Come, look at the works of the Lord. What a wasteland he has made of the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He shatters the bow. He cuts up the spear. He burns the carts with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. The Lord of armies is with us. The God of Jacob is a fortress for us. Until next time, brothers and sisters, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The mighty fortress is our God, a trusty shield and weapon. He helps us.
do 